All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Mike Cross, and this is uh, stoichiometry problem number two. A little more complicated, but let's go ahead and get started. So in this one, it says, how many grams of copper will be produced from 92 grams of zinc? Again, we're given an equation. Um, and in this case, it actually looks like our equation is balanced. We have one zinc on each side. Um, one copper on each side of their reaction arrow, and two chlorines. So luckily, this one's already done, but again, our very first step is always to, to make sure that we have a balanced equation. Um, and then next, you notice that we have our little plan of attack in the bottom left. For this one, um, it looks like we are going to, um, to need a few more steps than in stoichiometry problem one, if you watch that one. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So first, I'm going to go ahead and put ones here. Some people like to do this, some people don't. Um, but in my balanced equation, it looks like these are all ones. It's just implied there. Um, next, let's go ahead and set up a uh, you know kind of a factor label method problem here, and then we'll see how many steps this is going to take in order to solve it. All right. So just like always, I like to put my question mark down here. Looks like in this case, uh, the question mark is how many grams of copper? So I'm going to put grams of Cu, squeeze that down in the bottom right here. And then it says um, that I'm starting with 92 grams of zinc. So let's go ahead and put 92 grams of zinc in that top left corner. Now looking at my plan of attack down here, looks like I'm going from grams of zinc all the way into grams of copper. So it looks like that's going to take one, two, three steps to get there. All right, so let's go ahead and give myself a couple of boxes to work with here. Looks like my first step is I'm going to need the molar mass of substance A, in this case the molar mass of zinc. So a molar mass uh, conversion factor always looks the same. It'll always say one mole, in this case of zinc, on the top, and then a certain number of grams of zinc on the bottom. To get the number of grams, we need the molar mass, which is uh, found on the periodic table. So in this case, it says that um, zinc is 65.38 grams. So I'm just going to put in 65.38 grams. Okay. Um, and I could put grams of zinc if I want to be more precise, just to make sure. Um, next, we are going to use our balanced equation domino. Our balanced equation, I like to think of these as little dominoes. And so, um, looking at that, uh, it's going to be moles of zinc down here at the bottom and moles of copper up on the top. That way they'll cancel. Now, I'm going to need my numbers from my balanced equation here. So looking at zinc, it looks like there's a 1 there. So I'm going to put a 1 there. And here's my copper over there. I'm going to put a 1 there. Now you might think, well, why do I care if they're just 1s? Uh, it's just a good habit to get into to um, include those because many times the number, the coefficients are not 1. And so you need to, uh, to make sure you insert those. All right, last but not least, it looks like I need to get the molar mass of substance B, in this case, copper. So a molar mass domino always looks the same. In this case, I'm going to put one mole of copper on the bottom so that it will cancel out. Um, and then looking at my periodic table, the molar mass of copper is about 63.55 grams. So 63.55 grams of copper. Now I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, check myself before I wreck myself. Make sure that my grams of zinc cancel, my moles of zinc cancel, my moles of copper cancel, and my grams of copper cancel. Everything canceled out nicely, which means that I know I've set up my problem correctly. Now my final step is to do um, what we always do in a problem like this, and that is to multiply all the way across the top. In this case, 92 times 1 times 1 times 63.55 okay and then I need to divide by the entire denominator in this case it's just 65.38 times 1 times 1 so in other words I'm dividing by 65.38 and it looks like um, rounding to two sig figs 
my answer comes out to be about 89. And what are my units? Well, over here, looks like it was grams of copper. So, what this tells me is that if I put in 92 grams of zinc and it completely reacts according to this equation, I should be able to get out 89 grams of copper. And that's it.